six years old, and for the first time, I heard the words, a cupcake. I'm Jeffrey Bryan Sauls. I am six years old. Sometime we have meat, goat meat, gazelles. Elephant meat tastes rotten to me. <laughs> Giraffe is my favorite. This year we have a new thing in the freezer called TV dinners. <laughs> <laughs> They're little things. They have like applesauce and turkey and stuffing. And you pull them out of the, the oven. Oh, I thought it was fantastic. Really heartfelt, illuminating. Two souls who lived such different experiences to then to find a place where they could connect so deeply that they can call each other brother is, it's really inspiring. The attack came suddenly and horribly. Explosions, men on horses and camels chasing people. So we ran up toward the hills and into the arms of hell. It was not supposed to be this way. This is nothing at all like how we had planned. This is not the way it was supposed to go. So, I mean, we, we dare death. We use it as a tool to better know and enjoy our lives. But we know our stuff. We never fail. It's a game that we play and we never lose. We never lose. Never. To be invited in the journey through somebody's pain to the other side of it is just really heart opening. It's beautiful, it's poignant, and it's absolutely will affect me in my life, you know, and hopefully I can bring the same to others. Yes, this was masterful storytelling and brought us right into the lives of each of the young men. I didn't see it coming. I mean, I knew a little bit of background about the whole thing, but the way they weaved it in about these parallel lives and then boom, they're at the same table together. And so it opens us up to really feel what's going on and experience what's going on as well as processing it mentally, we feel it emotionally. When I first saw Aleppo's face, there was something about it that told me that this man was going to have an impact on a lot of people. The performance quality of Jeff Sauls, the way he commands the room as a theater person and theater creator, I was struck by his ability to own the room and own the space. The learning that I take away from, from the whole production, they're from radically different cultures, God knows radically different skin colors, radically different histories, but each of them clearly these are two individuals of character. It is manifest across cultures, manifest across skin colors, manifest across generations. As a matter of fact, we're going to take this thing on the road. Aleppo and I are going to do some traveling. We're going to talk at churches and organizations and, and delicatessens. <laughs> we should see this young man eat a matzo ball. It's really impressive. <laughs> I'm gonna go and eat some some elephant. I can't wait to get to Dinkland. Eat, my, eat me some giraffe. <laughs> yeah, giraffe meat is the mm, best. The best my favorite. <laughs> you gonna like the giraffe. I'm meat on a little giraffe leg. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. People walk around in sort of a a state of somnambulism. We all walk around half asleep, and then something happens. Like men come to your village in the night, riding camels and horses, shooting, setting fire. It tends to wake you up. You go off on the mountain and you lose your best friend, it tends to wake you up. So we don't tell these stories to get people to cry or to be upset, but to kind of wake up a sense of what really happens in life. Because from that deep sense of wakefulness comes an appreciation, comes a willingness to take risks, comes an appreciation for the, the brevity and the evanescence of life itself. So I think the fact that these stories are true, we offer them as a gift to help an audience begin to feel, to laugh and to cry and to walk away enriched and dedicated to making life a more fully lived experience.